What is up YouTube and welcome to another video. Today I just wanted to make a little bit more informal type of video, Q&A style. I've got a ton of videos planned in the future but with the production quality and all the editing, life has been a bit busy at the moment so I thought we could do a couple of Q&A videos to fill the void. Let me know if you enjoy these Q&A style videos by leaving a comment down below. And without further ado, let's go. Now I get this type of questions a lot and it's very difficult to answer because getting this question on social media and you're having to answer it in a single tweet or just in a comment section down below is not that simple. I can write a textbook on this question and the problem is there is not just a textbook answer to this question and the question is how do we learn new things? How do I learn new technology? Technology is constantly evolving. There's always new technology. Software engineering is such a wide field. You have Kubernetes, you have Docker, you have all this different programming language and software development, you've got front end, back end, you've got all the different types of data storage, dealing with data, the cloud, infrastructure as code, CICD. How do you keep up to date with all of this and how do you approach learning these things? Certificates and degrees and all of these type of things are only going to teach you one sort of thing. It doesn't actually teach you how to learn. So as I said, there is no textbook answer to learning new things, but some of the fundamentals that I apply are very very simple. When you were young and you learned how to ride a bicycle, your parents put three wheels on the back of the bicycle so that you can learn how to balance. You had to learn about the steering, you had to learn about the pedals, but having those three wheels, you didn't have to worry about balance. Then as you grew older and you got used to that, your parents might have removed the little wheels at the back, the training wheels, and then you had to learn about balance. But some of the fundamental stuff still carried over, like how to steer and how to pedal. So then you start learning how to add balance, riding a bicycle and taking that fundamental knowledge further you may have wanted to learn how to ride a motorcycle and all that fundamental knowledge will carry over into that as well although motorcycles are very different they still have a steering wheel they still have balance you still have two wheels and then when you learn to drive a car, you learned about the gas pedal, brakes, certain fundamentals that carried over from a motorcycle, even though they're not really the same thing. The same applies to software engineering. A lot of fundamentals, when you understand the core concepts, carry over into technology and other technologies. And exactly the same thing applies to software developers, software engineers, system administrators, DevOps engineers, or whether you're a front-end coder or a back-end developer. We all have to look at code at some point in our career we all have to maybe compile code how to deliver code whether you're a programmer or not you might have seen a script you might have worked on a virtual machine you might have played with some networking components all of these fundamentals are glued together in some way. So I'm gonna go a little bit down a rabbit hole, but hopefully my ideas become clear. So maybe back in the day when you started out and you showed a passion in computers, you might've built your own computer. You might've sourced all the different parts, the motherboard, the CPU, the hard drive, put it all together in a case, started it up, went into this thing called the BIOS, which allows you to kind of bootstrap everything together, choose an operating system, whether you choose Windows or Linux, doesn't really matter. At the end of the day, the operating system is just something that deals with the hardware so that you don't have to. The operating system is just written in whatever programming language, whether it is C or whatever, it doesn't really matter. At the end of the day, the operating system is written in a programming language. And when you start learning a basic programming language, like let's say you start with Python, all of these languages share fundamental concepts. They all have variables. They all have functions. They all have loops, if statements. They all have dependencies, whether you write Go, if you write Python, you have pip. Node.js has NPM, c -sharp has NuGet, and when you're building applications like a web service, you're going to install it onto an operating system, and they all have things in common, like they expose a port and a URL. They all have to be somewhat compiled or packaged so that they can be deployed, whether you compile it into an assembly, a binary, a DLL, a package, or a tar file, or a Docker container. It doesn't really matter. All of these concepts is all about building software and deploying it, whether you deploy 
deploy it to that machine that you built or you deploy it to a virtual machine or a machine in the cloud, it doesn't really matter. What I'm trying to get to here is that all of these little things that you learn, and it doesn't have to be in detail, will eventually form part of a bigger puzzle. You don't have to be a software developer. If you go and play around with Golang, build your first application, deploy it, you may be introduced with technology like Docker. You might learn a few networking concepts along the way. You might learn some programming concepts along the way. It's all going to come together and form a bigger picture of the software engineering world. And as you piece these things together, you learn about programming concepts, networking, you learn about packaging an application, you learn about deploying it. Maybe you learn a little bit about the cloud. As time goes on, all of these things become cemented in fundamental knowledge and you start building this thing called experience. And as time progresses, you'll be enforcing all of these things that you've learned because you'll realize that there's a lot of repeated concepts. Like learning a programming language, you'll realize that there's the same concept of variables, loops and functions. You still have to compile that code or package it up. It has to be deployed. If you start learning about CICD, you're going to learn about similar patterns, checking out code from a source control, running a build command, running tests, deployment. All of these things are similar, whether you use Jenkins, Argo CD, TeamCity, Bamboo, Travis CI, GitLab, you name it. Let's take a look at databases, for example. When you're learning how to stand up a database, like let's say MySQL, you're going to have to learn how to run the installation, how to deploy it, how to configure it. And then one, once you have an instance up and running, what if that instance dies? There's going to be this thing called high availability where you have to run at least three of them. There's a concept of replication. So if one of the instance dies, you don't have data loss. And once you have a successful MySQL cluster up and running, the same thing is going to apply to something like Postgres or Redis or Cassandra. If you take a look at message queues as another example, they all have to persist data somewhere. They all have to replicate. They all have to be highly available. There's going to be this concept of quorum, masters and slave nodes. So as you're learning new technology, you're going to find that you're repeating yourself a lot. You're going to learn how to install, how to configure, how to start it up, how to maybe build a Docker file so that you can make it portable. At the end of the day, the only difference is the features that that software provides and its configuration. So what I'm trying to get to here is once you've learned how to deploy one database, that fundamental knowledge is going to carry over when you try to learn another database technology like MongoDB or Cockroach. DB that makes it easier to learn. Let's take a look at Kubernetes, for example. With Kubernetes, we just build up a YAML file to tell Kubernetes how to run our container. So I know from working with Kubernetes that I'm going to need a container image. Maybe it's going to need to expose a port. It's going to need a config. So I'm going to use a config map. Maybe I'm going to need a service to enable traffic to it and an ingress to give it like a nice fancy URL. If I decide tomorrow I want to change my orchestrator and deploy to something like like Heroku or Nomad, the same concepts are going to apply. I'm going to have to give it a container image, a URL, a port, a config. So the fundamentals, once you've learned one thing, carries over into the next because the problem of traditional software still exists. We have to compile code, we have to deploy it, we have to configure it. So now we've spoken about all these different pieces of the technology puzzle and how they all fit together and how learning every piece of the puzzle is going to help you learn more pieces of the puzzle and accelerate your learning. Now this leads me to another topic, which is what should you learn as a DevOps engineer or a software engineer? A lot of people are very tunnel focused in what they want to learn and what they should learn. Just because you're employed as a software developer that writes code doesn't mean you need tunnel vision and only write code. Maybe to fulfill your job role or to get your salary, yes. But if you really want to stand out as a developer, understanding how your code is compiled, how it's packaged, how it's deployed, how the networking works that exposes your application to the internet, how to monitor that application, how to get metrics, how to get tracing, how to make your application portable so you can deploy it anywhere. Having a basic understanding of all these different pieces of the puzzle and how they come together will place you five steps ahead of any other developer developer that's applying for the same role. I've seen software developers who are so purely focused on only writing code that they don't have a clue about the puzzles around the ecosystem. And there's nothing wrong with that. That's a personal choice. But if you have a production outage and you're a software developer and you're able to jump into that production environment, use kubectl, have a look at what's going on with the container. Maybe you're looking in Prometheus or you're digging through your log stash and you're able to find the root cause. As a developer, this is going to make you shine above the rest. 
trust. And the same thing goes for system administrators, people who look after databases, having that fundamental knowledge about how replication works, maybe have a basic understanding of different database technologies will help you make better architectural decisions about what database is right for you. Now, the same thing applies to a DevOps engineer where I've been getting a lot of questions. What programming language should I learn? Do I need to know how to code as a DevOps engineer? The answer is no, you do not need to know how to code. But again, if you have tunnel focus and think that a DevOps role is just about deployments and CI CD and looking at Kubernetes YAML files, then you're only limiting yourself and your potential in your career. And to answer your question about what programming language to use, it doesn't really matter. At the end of the day, as I mentioned, the fundamentals of programming is the same. You're going to learn about loops. You're going to learn about dependencies. You're going to learn about functions, if statements, how to compile the code, how to run the code. And those are things that help DevOps engineers to enhance CI CD pipelines, how to build code efficiently, how to make your pipelines run efficiently, how to do things like unit tests and integration tests and improve overall software quality. If you're a DevOps engineer and you're interested to know how to code, check out my Go introduction below where I demonstrate all of these fundamental concepts and you don't have to be an expert. Now during this conversation it may sound like I'm saying that as a DevOps engineer or software engineer you should know everything and you should know a lot. Now part of it is true because there's a lot of technology to learn but how much should you learn? Now, the answer to that is you don't need to become an expert at all. And to be honest, I cover a lot of topics in my videos of technologies that I've never seen before. And if you take a look at all my videos, the process of learning is the same across most of them. I always start with the documentation. I ask myself, where's the quick start guide? Where's the introduction section? How do I get this thing downloaded? Maybe I ask myself, can I run it in a container so it's portable? How do I install this thing I'm trying to learn? How do I configure? this thing that I'm trying to learn and how do I start it up? How do I run it? How do I use it? What features does it have? And then I play around with that technology for a couple of days until I'm comfortable with running it. And this is the same thing for my Redis guide, my RabbitMQ, my Kafka series, and many of the videos that I do. It just shows you that it's very simple to learn these concepts. And there's a lot of repeated strategies when I'm learning something new that you can apply. So I've mentioned that every video that I make and every technology that I learn has repeated patterns of how I do that. I always start with the documentation, how to install the technology that I'm looking at, how to configure it, how to run it, and then I dive down into each feature. And the important thing here is learn by doing. Don't spend too much time in the documentation. Try to get whatever technology you're working on up and running as soon as possible so that you can start doing hands-on work because the best way to learn is to learn by doing. So if we take a look at my GitHub repo, for every video that I make, I structure everything in a Git repo. So you can see everything regarding Kubernetes is in the Kubernetes folder. We talk about deployments, services, config maps, daemon sets, everything Kubernetes related. I then have things like Jenkins, Drone CI, Argo CD, different CI CD systems. I also have storage concepts. So here I learned about Redis. If we look at messaging, I learned about message queues and message brokers. So we have RabbitMQ, we have Kafka. But the important thing I wanted to show you is that I fundamentally do the same thing whenever I learn a new technology. So if we take a look at storage and Redis, I always start with a readme. And in the readme, I always begin with a Docker file because that's my preferred way of installing the software. If we take a look at the Redis Docker file, it will resemble the instructions of how to install Redis in a container and then also how to run Redis. So I have a command there on running it. And then the second part is configuring it. And then I start look, taking a look at the features such as the security features, persistence, the client application and how to use Redis. The same thing goes for my messaging. So if I take a look at message queues and I want to learn about Kafka, I start with a readme. And the readme is always about the official documentation, introduction, how to build a Docker file. So installing Kafka, exploring the installation and then starting with configuration and how to run it. And then I dive down into each of the features and how to do replication, consumers and producers and so forth. Once you've learned about Kafka and you understand message queues, it's very simple to go into something like RabbitMQ or other message queue systems. But then again, I go to RabbitMQ and I 
start to read me. I then spend some time reading through the documentation, how to get RabbitMQ up and running. So then I proceed to create a Docker file. And again, I run it and I learn how to configure RabbitMQ. And then I start taking a look at each of the features such as management, statistics, publishing and consuming messages, as well as clustering. All these fundamental things about message queues exists in all the different technologies. So once you've learned one, it's really simple to learn another one. At the end of the day, you have to start somewhere. And the best thing to do is just to pick a technology or something you want to learn, get it up and running and try to be hands on. And the last bit I wanted to show you guys is my website. On my website, I've added a link to an engineering toolbox that I've been working on. Now, this is just something I've been toying around with, but it's an idea of how to stitch all my videos and all my learnings together. So we start at a very high level at a so as a software engineer or a DevOps engineer, you need to probably learn about Kubernetes, CICD, how to deal with data, how to deal with the web, how to do monitoring, how to code, learn about Docker and learn about Linux. And then as you dive deeper, you can start with the introduction walkthrough with Kubernetes. So you can learn about getting started using kubectl, deployments, config secrets, and all the way up to more advanced concepts. And then once you have learned about the basics of Kubernetes, you can toy around with CICD. So for CICD, we have Flux, Argo CD, Drone CI, Jenkins. And then you might want to deploy Kubernetes to the cloud. So I have a cloud series where we do Azure AKS, Amazon EKS, Google GKE, Linode, and DigitalOcean. And when you have a Kubernetes cluster up and running, whether it's locally or in the cloud, you want to monitor it. So we have a monitoring section. And monitoring, we talk about Prometheus, which is how to monitor the infrastructure of Kubernetes, and then as well as logging. So we have Fluentd. When you get more advanced, you're going to learn about service mesh. So how do I deploy a service mesh to Kubernetes? So you have an introduction to service mesh, Linkerd and Istio. Then you may have heard of Vault, how to store secrets. So I have a Vault guide as well, which is HashiCorp Vault. There's a four part series regarding secrets. And finally, auto scaling, how to scale clusters. So scale the nodes or the pods. Once you have the basic grasp on Kubernetes, you can go into CICD, which at the moment I've only covered CICD on Kubernetes. You can move to data, learn about different data storages like Redis. We have a Redis guide over here. I have a message broker and message queue section. I have RabbitMQ, Kafka is also available. And then I have a placeholder for web where I'll be taking a look at things like HAProxy and Nginx and Apache. How to run web servers and proxies and load balancers. Then I have monitoring guide. So when you're writing applications, you may want to learn how to monitor logs so that there's a Fluent D section, as well as distributed tracing. Then if you want to learn the fundamentals of coding, we have a coding section with Go, Python, C Sharp, and Node.js. And then finally, a placeholder for Docker and Linux. So as you can see, this toolbox is not only a way for me to share the things that I've learned, but it also helps me keep track of everything that I've learned in a neat catalog. And this helps me keep track of everything I've learned. If I need to brush up on something, I can go back and rewatch the video. And I can even go back to the GitHub repo and look at the commands I ran, the configuration, how I started up something, how I deployed it. So the GitHub repo becomes like a journal where I track everything that I've learned. And as we know already, in technology, there's a ton of things to learn. So I would highly recommend creating a GitHub repo or some kind of journal where you can keep track of everything you've learned. And feel free to check out the link down below to my GitHub repo, as well as the toolbox and pick a path of things you want to learn and learn by doing. So that is basically how I learn in a nutshell. So hopefully this video helped you to understand that technology is just a bunch of pieces of a puzzle that you need to fit together. So let me know down in the comments below, how do you learn new technology? And if you like the video, be sure to like and subscribe and hit the bell. And if you want to support the channel even further, be sure to check out the Patreon link down below or hit the join button and become a YouTube member. And as always, thanks for watching and until next time, peace.